Hello everyone, I want to show off my awesome computerized item system. Handles everything. I can input into it, I can output from it, I can get any any item I wish using my fancy terminal classes with chat commands. Um, I've, I've got, gone over this a little bit before, but now it's the system's totally complete. Um, the entire system's done, um, from the ore processor to the router to fill up the barrels to the automatic output of items from the barrels. So um, to demonstrate, I can, for the output, this is the big thing about this system. Um, I'm going to give away a bunch of code in the description, but keep in mind that this stuff you'd have to build it exactly the same as mine unless you understand the code and are able to change it for your own design. Um, but I mean, if you wanted to copy mine, you'd have to copy this, the size of this room and the, and the layout of all the barrels and stuff. So I wouldn't really re recommend just like copying it like that unless you really know what you're doing. I mean, I mean you could if you want, but anyways, let me just demonstrate how it works. So this command, two dollar sign, that's how you do a chat command with these terminal glasses that I'm wearing. Um, you can see I also got this heads up display f using the terminal glasses also, which I programmed myself. Um, so I can I, I, I have this program where I can say get and I can type any number up to 256 which is four stacks so I can get any number of any item I want um, so for example I can get 120 horse gem and my turtle he'll know how to get to whatever item I tell him to get and then he's grabbing my force gems and then in my ender pouch, labeled from base, I got my force gems. They, it's 120 exactly. Now if I want to send items back, uh, this red ender pouch is to send to my processor. So if I can grab these out of here, I'm just going to do a quick run through of all the, all the different systems I set up. Um, basically the red sends it back to my ore processor, which is where all the, <coughs> all the processing begins. So you could send any item you want into this thing. This is going to be something that would be like taking items from the output of a quarry or whatever else. So um, this is my ore processor. The last video I uploaded was when I was building this thing. I'm just going to go through the, the whole system real quick and then I'll explain each part independently and I'll explain why what the, what the turtles do. Um, but this is a basic ore processor. If you've seen this, I mean you've probably seen this before if you played FTV for a little while. Just real, real basic um, macerator furnace, mostly just for ores, you know, all the stuff that needs to be macerated and smelted. Um, that's all this does. And any other item that, that isn't an ore like that is just sent over everything into the output. So blue, yellow, yellow is the output to my router from input from process. Basically the finished items from processing get sent to the router. And back over here, I haven't really finished this hallway, but I'll make it look nice later. Um, they are coming into the router from that blue, that blue, yellow, yellow over here. Now, instead of, as you know, maybe in Feed the Beast Unleashed, there's no more filters like from Red Power because Red Power is gone, so you can't like pump a stack at a time really easily, and there's no pneumatic tubes. So what I d what I'm using instead is a turtle. There's a turtle right underneath this ender chest, and he's pulling out items. He's, you'll see in his inventory for a second, real quick, when, once he grabs a force gem, unless they're already all gone. I have a feeling that they're already all done. Um, but basically, he's constantly, every like 0.3 seconds, he's pulling a stack out of the ender chest, and he's going to try to put it into the router. Now, the router is is connected it's it's going to be filling up all the barrels and and you you you'll be like well why is it way out here it's not even touching the barrels well the turtle counts as an inventory so the turtle is connecting it to the barrel so it all counts as one network and the upgrades for the filter i have the machine filter so it's only going to look at barrels it's going to insert into the top sides of the barrels and i got the bandwidth upgrade so it can go a stack at a time um now It'll handle item clogs as well because it's going to try to put into this router. And using a turtle, you can write a program that's smart enough to be able to tell whether or not you're able to put, place another item in the router. Basically, it'll tell when there's a clog in the router, and it'll it'll fix the clog by sending any clog items down into the chest below, 
which are then just pumped into the output down here. So all these all these uh, items are whatever I don't have barrels for. So that's that's all um, my new system. I know I've posted vi different videos in the past about how to handle um, router sorting systems and items that clog them. So that's my new solution. This is a very compact, um, easy solution. It's just the turtle, the chest, router, inner chest. I mean, like it's like as compact as you can get. No pipes or anything. So um, I'm gonna go through uh, starting at the beginning again, and then I'll uh, give away. I'm gonna list out all the programs I'm giving away. Oh, this portal is gonna take me back somewhere else. So over here to the ore processor. Here is my first, the first part of the system. So these turtles, they are just acting as hoppers because for the same reason that the other red power stuff is gone, hoppers are gone. Well, not that's not the same reason. Are those are really, I don't think those are from, no, those aren't from red power. Those are just probably gone because the new vanilla hoppers are in. <clears throat> but anyways, the there's no um, hoppers that everyone's used to using for the other packs. Those ones are gone. These are like the new vanilla hoppers. So um, I didn't want to use that. I wanted to use a turtle instead. Basically, it works the same way. Um, there's a program running right now. It just runs all the time because if you name a program startup, let me just terminate this and show you. See, in my directory, I have a program called startup at the bottom. That's my program. So if you name it as startup, then the turtle's going to run it automatically when, when the world is loaded, when the chunks are loaded. So you don't need to ever restart it. So and it doesn't take any fuel or anything. You just leave it here and it works, just like a part of the part of the system. You don't need to ever um, do any maintenance on it. So um, basically, this is like an upgraded hopper, and it can be upgraded more if I want it to be. But basically, imagine it's a hopper, but it's got 16 slots. And if I wanted to implement later, I could have it give status messages. For example, it'll it'll be able to tell if something's clogging up the system if it's if it's detected that its inventory is full it'll it'll be able to tell something's up and it'll give me a message to my heads up display giving me a warning like hey something's wrong with the macerator something's clogging it up go go clean it up so i haven't done that but i don't, I don't think i i don't really know if i will cuz um there shouldn't be any problems um because it's really not very um complicated all these items are no, i know can be macerated and nothing else will ever get in here um Basically, this just every like 10 seconds, it'll check all its inventory spots, and see, it just checks all of them real quick. And uh, if it finds any slots that have any items in them, it'll just dump them down. And that's really all there is to it. Um, I'll just show you with the torch. In like a couple seconds, it'll send it down into the macerator. And of course, the torch wouldn't be possible to macerate, so nothing will happen to it. Why is it not going? Oh, no. Why is it not sending it down? Maybe it's not, maybe the macerator isn't accepting a torch. Let me um, get one iron. And I'll just send the iron into the, um, into the furnace, because I know the furnace will accept an iron ingot turn it into refined iron. So this is the same code as the macerator one. So this is going to take an iron ingot and then every like 10 seconds it'll it'll scan its whole inventory and find the first stack it can and send it down into the furnace. Notice that there, uh, you know if you were to pipe into a furnace or a macerator, you have to pipe it into the top I think. Um, you know a hopper used to put it into the top of the machines because that's the top slot is where you need the items to land. So th the turtles being on top of the machines, that's important. Um, otherwise, they, they would end up like in the bottom slot or I think I've even seen like a router and pneumatic tubes put stuff in the output slots, really weird stuff. So being on top is important and they basically just like filters. So nothing really crazy there, but if you want these like upgraded hoppers, then did I just call them filters? But if you want these upgraded hoppers, then they're, the, they're going to be the first link in the description to my paste bin. Now onto the router system. Um, over here, the blue, yellow, yellow links up my output of my processor to the input of the storage. Now, um, this is the chest that's going to get all the items. 
you know, for example, bone, instantly it's put into the router. I just barely saw it right there and it's already in the barrel. <clears throat> so the, this turtle right here, um, I'm just going to I'm just going to look at its code, or I'll, I'll, I'll explain briefly. I already kind of explained briefly, but basically every time it goes through this loop, which, happen, which re just repeats this code every like 0.3 seconds, it's just going to grab a stack, try to put it in the router, grab a stack, try to put it in the router. But then there's a condition that it checks for every time where it says, if you're unable to put it in the router, basically that's my way of detecting if the router's clogged, then execute the code that's going to unclog the router. So basically, if, if it has an item in its inventory and then it, it figures out that it's unable to place it into the router, then it's going to detect it as a problem and then it's going to go initiate the code to, to handle it. And the code is um, empty out your inventory by dropping the item you have into the inner chest up here. So like going reverse, then it's going to pull out of here, extract from the router, send that problem item down to the bottom chest and then pull out of the inner chest and send into the router again. So that's how I handle that problem. Now, this chest down here is where all the um, the problem items will end up, and this is just an autarkit gate that's pumping like a redstone engine into all the um, other chests. So all these are stuff that I can either define a barrel for later, because all these barrels I can define any item I want. So maybe if I get a lot of a certain item, then I will define a barrel for it, but otherwise these will just um, get whatever random items I put that end up in the system. Okay, so now the the coolest part of the system is definitely this guy. This is a guy that that um, retrieves items for you. So you can get any item you want. I can get, let me see, let me just show you all the stuff I got. Okay, obsidian. Let me get seven obsidian. And the way it works, oops, ooh, just, can't, I just canceled that. Get seven obsidian. Now he moves to the spot, sucks it out of the barrel, puts it in the in the output inner chest, and puts the remaining of the stack into the back into the yellow inner chest. Because the turtle can only pull a st he can only pull exactly one stack. He can't pull less than a stack. So he'll pull out sixty four, <coughs> and then um, <coughs> sorry about that. He'll place the, the seven or whatever number you request into your blue green green chest and then he'll pick up the, the green chest and then place the yellow chest and put all the remaining into the yellow chest and those just get put back in the barrel. So he needs to pull a stack at a time. So what happens if for example you have 40 gunpowder that's less than a stack. So what, what if I request seven gunpowder, what's going to happen? Well, he's going to pull the whole stack, and then what happens is the barrel would be empty. So, then what would happen is the router would detect that barrel is empty, and then it would send the next item it gets into that barrel. And I don't want that, because that's that's going to screw up the system. So, um, the turtle is going to automatically be able to d detect if he pulled less than a stack. So then, if he did, then he'll break the barrel, remove it from the system, so no items get placed into it. And then he'll also give me a message in, into my heads up display saying that there's a broken barrel in it. I need to go fix it. So get seven gunpowder. It's gonna move over to the gunpowder. It's gonna break the barrel. And it gave me the warning, removed the barrel, and it just continued and delivered like normal. Now um, this gunpowder gets sent back into the system, and since the barrel is no longer there, it just gets sent into the into the chest down here. So later, at any point, I can come. Gr I can come um, now that I see that 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 um, message. If I just do like an invalid command, I can show you. It shows removed a barrel. So then I know that I need to go repair this barrel at some point. And whenever I feel like repairing the barrel, I just need to grab it out of its inventory. It'll say in slot three, and I'll just do it like that, and place the gunpowder in there. And I place a sign on top of every barrel so I know what's in it because you can't really see the the items when they're all in a row like that, all in one layer. Um, so I give it. I, I put two things on the sign. I put the name of the item, and then I give the exact phrase that I need to use in order for the turtle to know what I mean. And b the, basically, the keyword that I programmed into the code in the second line. So, because some of these I, I change a little bit, like gelatinous slime. Instead of me saying that, I just type blue slime, and I'll know what it means. Like I can get to blue slime instead of typing out gelatinous slime. 
Um, so then I got my two blue slime. So that's basically the whole system. Um, some important things about this to note is that it will reset itself if I was to restart the world. So let me save and quit and join again. And you'll see that every time this area is loaded, the turtle will reset itself. So it, it'll never, um, ooh, that's a visual bug. The barrels aren't loading, but it's, it's resetting itself. Um, and it tells you when it's ready. Um, it'll also refuel itself if it ever needs to. Um, let me restart this again because it, it, it's got a visual bug. I defined in the code the, the chest where it needs to know where it is if it ever needs fuel again. Alright, this is a, I'll just leave it like this. And that happens to be over here. This is coal coke. So it'll, it'll know if it ever gets below a certain fuel amount, just go over to the, the coal coke barrel and grab some fuel and consume it. Um, let me see what else does it do. Um, well basically you can expand it more. Um, if uh, if you needed to add more barrels, you can just expand it out that way, and you can fill up the whole this whole room, which would be 255 barrels. Um, you can you can replace the barrels with deep storage units. If you ever have, if you ever see that a barrel's fill, full, and you would be able to tell if you start getting, for example, iron ingots showing up in this chest, you would know that the iron barrel filled up. Then you would probably just want to replace that barrel with a deep storage unit, which can hold like two billion items. So you'll never have a problem again. Um, that's pretty much it. If you if you're gonna actually use this code, um, look into the code for the the mining turtle, the item the item bot. I'll I'll refer to it as the item retrieval bot. That um, look at towards the bottom of the code. That's where I define all the barrels. Now the numbering system. This one starts at one, then it goes two, three, all the way up to fifteen. The dimensions of the room have to be 16 by 16 unless you go in and change the code. Um, so basically imagine in order to figure out what barrel you're at, for example you just put items into here. Um, you you want to put some track into here. Um, that's, then you have to figure out what what number to give that in a code, if you know how to program at least. Then um, in order to figure out the number, just multiply the row number. So this is row 0, 1, two and three. This is row zero and that's like row zero going the other way. So it starts at zeros. This is going to be row three. Multiply that number by 16 and then add the number on this on this axis. So zero, one, two, three. So three times 16, 48 plus three. That is, um, you know, whatever, 51. So this would be barrel 51. If I was to go into the code for this turtle, and it's going to be massive, massive text file, which I've been, I haven't been editing with the turtle. I've been using Notepad++. But if I go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see all the definitions for the locations. Um, coming up right here. If we're seeing, I, this is all, this is all the, all the items. So if I scroll over to the right, then you can see. All these items, I, I give them the name and then I give them the barrel number. So if I go down to find like barrel 51, which is row three, oh, well it'll be row four. In the in the code, it's it's I, I give the comment calling it row four because it kind of is the fourth row, but it's indexed as three. If you're doing the math, it's zero, one, two, three. So you can see here track, then barrel number equals 51, like just like the math we just figured out. Multiply by 16, add the add the other number for the other axis, and that's how you figure out the barrel number. Um, so, if you're a programmer, that might be pretty interesting. Um, in order to use these terminal glasses, you're you're gonna want to need. I mean, you're gonna need a terminal glasses bridge, and it's not too expensive. Well, here's a terminal glasses recipe: advanced monitor and networking cable. And then you're going to need to put this next to a computer to use it as a peripheral. And you, you oh, you are, it is pretty expensive. Um, you're going to need a bunch of ender pearls, basically. That's the expensive part. Um, then some redstone. So you're going to stick this next to the computer. My code is already set up for it to expect it to be on the left side of the computer. And you're also going to need a wireless modem on top of the computer so it can communicate with the turtle. Um, when, once you craft your terminal glasses, you're going to have to have them in your hand. Right-click the the bridge 
and that'll link them to that bridge and then it'll, I guess it'll automatically put them on your face. And then if you run the code, it should all work the same, but of course everything else would have to be the same layout also. Um, that's pretty much all you need to know. Just look through my code if you're if you're interested in learning about that, and you can mess with it and change some stuff around. But I just wanted to demonstrate this awesome system you can get using um, terminal glasses combined with the wireless turtles and uh, different stuff. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing that. I will see you next time. Adios. Bye bye.